yesterday, December 7, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. Yes, it was up to the submarines. At that time, we had exactly 51 submarines in the Pacific, and that included 12 of the old S-class. Small and slow, but they gave a good account of themselves. On December 15th, eight days after Pearl Harbor, American subs drew their first blood. The swordfish was cruising off Hainan Island in the South China Sea. On the radio, they could hear the voice of a Japanese woman speaking faultless English. Later, she would become famous as Tokyo Rose. We know very well that American submarines have headed west from Pearl Harbor. If American submariners are wise, you will turn back. Certain death awaits you over here. And now I'll play for you unfortunate Americans a popular recording. One week after Pearl Harbor, the Akutsu Maru, 8,663 tons, became the first victim of an American sub, a dubious honor. It wasn't long before she had plenty of company at the bottom of the ocean. On the 1st of January, the 5,384-ton Canaan Maru was sunk right off the very coast of Japan. But those early days were tough. Just look at the vast amount of territory the Japs overran in no time at all. Naturally, they wanted to consolidate, keep all that loot from the conquered territories pouring into Japan. Fuel, oil, rubber, coal, iron, rice. It was our job to see that most of that loot didn't get there. And for 18 months, our subs were the only ships that penetrated enemy-controlled sea lanes. It was rugged, but it paid off. Let the Japs tell you about it. American submarines in 1942 sank 134 Japanese merchant ships, totaling 580,000 or 390 tons and 140,000 tons of men of war. But that was only beginning. Yes, only the beginning. Even newly commissioned subs got big scores. For instance, the trigger. Her story starts in Mare Island. That's the way she looked to me the first time I ever saw her. I was reported as mess attendant. Got to be off as cook first class time I was transferred. She didn't look like nothing much to me right then. Just a lot of pipe and steel. No life, no spirit. But I felt a little better when I saw the galley. Small but clean, the latest in devices. A man sure could get a mess of cooking done in there. But all in all, I sure felt let down. I said to myself, man, what possessed you to volunteer for the subservice anyhow? Next time, you'll keep your big mouth shut. I began to feel a little better, though, about the trigger when we got underway. There was just something about it. Well, by the time we reached Pearl, the trigger and me was friends. She sure won me over. How'd you do it? Well, well, I tell you, shipping. Well, it's like our exec says. He says, I don't find it any easier than the steward to put into words what I feel about the trigger. I think it's that all ships have sold, and all sailors know it. But it takes a while to learn to commune with it. It took me quite some time. But when it happened, it was our first patrol. Take her down before we're spotted. That baby might mount enough guns to blast us to kingdom come. Take her down. That's the character. 
Now let's take a look to see if she spotted us. Everything looks normal from here. If it isn't a trap. She might be a Q ship carrying depth charges and sound gear. We can't hit her till we close the range. To close the range, we've got to watch out that she doesn't see or hear us, or the killer will become the corpse. The minutes seem like hours until we get into position. Easy, easy, then. Estimated range, 1,500 yards, track 90 port, tower angle five left, stand by. He's coming on, coming on, fire one. Then, eight seconds. Fire two. Trigger had come of age, but she was soon to face her first ordeal. Depth charging. Sunkers. Several nights later, we heard Tokyo Rose on our radio. I regret to inform all American submarines that one of their number has recently fallen victim to a destroyer of the Imperial Japanese Navy. You will hear an appropriate recording. <laughs> Fire. Fire. Fire three. Three fired. 
Trigger, of course, was subjected to another terrific depth charge. There were moments when no one on board thought she'd come through, but she stood up and eventually got away. The carrier just managed to crawl back to Tokyo Bay, badly crippled. The trigger was lost in March 45 off the Ryukyus. At that time, she was one of the highest ranking subs in tonnage and total number of ships sunk. The trigger will never be forgotten. Nor will the work of all our other submarines. In 1943, 284 Japanese ships, totaling 1,341,968 tons, brush about 100,000 tons of warships were sunk by American submarines. Naturally, they got some of our subs too, but our losses weren't excessive when you consider what was accomplished. In fact, they were quite small compared to the losses of the Jap and German submarine services but we felt deeply each individual loss. For instance, take the case of the skull. On 19 November 1943, we sighted a fast convoy and made an attack. Their screen detected us and immediately subjected us to depth charges. Things were getting tough when we heard a rain squall. We headed forward and shook the jets. At least we thought we did. But the moment we regained periscope depth, we found that jet destroyer sitting right on our lap. tried to duck, but he had heard as well as seen it.
But now for a change. It was a very pleasant phase to our activities. Patrols were tough on bodies and nerves, so we arranged a program of relaxation and rehabilitation between runs that was the envy of every branch of service. With the approval and backing of Fleet Admiral Nimitz, our Commander-in-Chief, we took over the Royal Hawaiian Hotel in Honolulu, lock, stock, and barrel. We said to the submarine men, it's all yours. Other operating forces also had quarters at the Royal, where it held about 150 officers and 1,000 men. But the majority were always submarine men and aviators from the carrier groups. <laughs> I guess the Royal Hawaiian was one of the reasons there was a waiting list for sub-duty. It almost seems like the more rest and fun our men had, the more damage they did to the Jap fleet. And that's understandable, too, for they went to sea mentally and physically fit and trained to meet any type of combat. Just take the figures for 44. In 1944, 429 merchant ships, totaling 387,708 tons, were destroyed by yourself. In addition, about 500,000 tons of warships were sunk. And these figures for merchant ships include only ships of 1,000 tons or larger. The smaller ships sunk by your sub, chiefly by Gulf Fire, were too numerous to count. just about shot. In fact, by 1945, targets were getting awfully scarce and awfully small. What was left of Jap shipping tried desperately to crawl home, hugging the coast. But our subs went right after them, right into the dangerous shallow water, right along the China coast and into the minefield Yellow Sea. We gave them no rest. This was about the time of the big carrier strikes and the B-29 raids in the homeland, which brings up another interesting phase of submarine work. Lifeguard duty. That is, the picking up of our downed aviators. We had quite an air-sea rescue system worked out. It didn't get much publicity because we didn't want the Japs to know about it. I'm an electrician's mate second class. Of course, that means I don't get to see much tough side action, so... The other day I says to the chief, I says, um, Hey, chief, how about me getting in the I thought I was kind of crazy wanting to be topside of the others, but I finally gave in, and here I am. Hey, this is beginning to be more likely. One load of fish that won't end up in Jap bellies. How about this? Prisoners. Welcome aboard, boys. You'll find conditions a little cramped, but we'll treat you right, feed you well, even though you don't deserve it. I'd always heard that Japs would, would rather die than be taken prisoner, but these guys don't seem to object to our rescue efforts. Wait a minute. We've got something. A B-29 is in trouble. We've got him on radar, but the lookouts haven't spotted him yet. Say, this lifeguard stuff is new to me, but it has its exciting moments. Huh. 
brother. Am I glad I'm not on that plane? Well, here's a couple that were lucky enough to jump. We're going over to pick them up and, and then survey the wreckage to see if there are others we can rescue. Maybe we'll find some still alive. This job of dragging tires and half-drowned parts aboard a sub looks easy, but it takes careful handling and a, a certain amount of risk on the part of our own boys. Climbing up the side of a slippery otter hull and superstructure in a choppy sea isn't easy, even for one of our own men. So it gets a bit complicated when these zoomies drop in on us. Say, these guys look like they're badly shot up. Doc is up here now, and first aid is being given to those who need it right away. There isn't time for treating for shock and exposure on deck because we're in enemy waters and subject to attack at any moment, so Skipper says to get them below as soon as possible. Here we are now, down in the chief's quarters. Doc has made this compartment into a first-class operating room. Looks like we're going to have more company in a few minutes. You know, this picking up of flyers is getting to be quite a habit with us. Of course, most of the guys here in the sub would rather be firing fish or the deck guns, but it's a great feeling to be able to rescue a small bunch of fellows like these, and, and it's a relief to have somebody new to swap yarns with after being out here for so long. Sometimes the, the kid you and I used to know back home isn't so lucky. We're doing all we can. No sign yet, but we're not giving up. Well, we tried, but he didn't make it. But we'll make it up to him. We'll save as many of his buddies as we can. Yes, many of that boy's buddies were saved. At one time, we had 22 submarines on station whose primary duty was lifeguarding. All in all, we rescued more than 500 Army, Navy, and Marine aviators. The submarines were proud of that work and eager for the assignment. But in the last months of the war, it didn't supply enough action to satisfy them. So, as you'll see, they figured out some special assignments for themselves. And very interesting, too. During the summer of 45, Gerardi was in the same fix as all the other subs. No targets really worth wasting the taxpayers' torpedoes on. Oh, we managed to amuse ourselves. We shot up a few picket boats and other small craft. Knocked off a sea truck or two. Raised some mild hell in a general way. We played pirate and boarded some junks. Scared the crews half out of their yellow skins and gave the deep six to a lot of dried peas bound for Japan. We took a few prisoners. Exploded some mines. But there was nothing to write home about, even if we could have written home. Then one morning, we sighted a ship in the distance. It looked like it was tied to a dock alongside a cargo. We kept it under observation for about an hour. Looked like a two or three thousand ton freighter taking on coal by conveyor. We held a war council. It'd be risky entering a harbor full of rocks and shoals. Should we try it? Well, we didn't come out here to sit on our tufts. We changed course. Then the skipper, as he always did, spoke to the crew. Fellas, I think you might like to know what we're up to. There's a two or three thousand ton freighter in the harbor tied to a colliery dock, taking on coal. That's the biggest ship we've seen so far, and targets are too scarce these days to let any pass. On the good side of the ledger, I can mention these two items. One, there seems to be a lack of patrol craft in this spot, and two, 
I don't think they're any mine because there's an awful lot of small craft around. Now, on the bad side of the ledger, the harbor's full of rocks and shoals. Navigation's going to be tough. We'll make a submerged attack, but then we'll have to service and have ordered out. If we're caught in here submerged, it'll be just too bad. However, we have the best navigator in the business. So what are we waiting for? Let's go. Battle stage is submerged. We got into position. Went through the preliminaries. Let me tell you, right here and now, when the real thing comes up, it's like nothing you ever went through in your life. When that scope goes up in this harbor, you're playing for keeps. Your blood pressure tells you that. The sweat on your hands and the butterfly in your chest keep reminding you that when you get within a thousand yards of your target, you're going to let go with everything you've got. Then get if you can. The exact look confirms it. We're dead on. And coming closer. Closer. Dozens of small craft crisscrossing overhead. If one of them sights our scope while the skipper's taking cuts to keep us off the rocks, you can make like the song and kiss the boys goodbye. Now, coming on a thousand yards. Twenty to go. Ten. Five. Fire one. Look at him scramble. Nuts. She's listening to port and down by the bow, but still afloat. Hey, wait a minute. They manned their deck gun there on the right. Looks like they think a plane got him. But we can't surface while that gun's still in business. All right, then, let her have another fish. Just ahead of the stack. Polish off ship and gun crew both with one blow. Fire two! Swing left again. Sonar reports fish ran true but suddenly stopped. No explosion. Must have buried itself in a mud bank or a torpedo net. But there's not time to speculate. The NIP gun crew spotted our periscope. They're taking pot shots at us. Better slip them another fish and quick. Steady on 280. Torpedo run, 750. Depth set, two feet. Gyro angle, 038. Fire three! Bullseye! And now, as Shakespeare said, let's not stand upon the order of our going, but let's go. Got a nerve shooting at us. What kind of hospitality do they call that? All right, now let's show some speed. Wait a minute. We must have surfaced too fast. The bow plane should have folded up like a fighter plane's wings. Start out like that, they'll drag our speed down till the Japs can catch us with a rowboat. And that's not all that can catch us. Come up, come up. There. Steady as you go, sweetheart. Now we can highball for deep water. But the Jap fire is getting closer. I'm beginning to sweat again. Well, here we are getting the decoration. So I guess we made it all right. But believe me, it was close. That was months ago, but I've just about now stopped sweating. The Power and Light Company is going to seem awfully beautiful in a few weeks when they hand me that ruptured duck.
But, brother, how I'm going to miss this boat and the boys. Yes, we rewarded our men in the submarines. Tried to honor them for the heroic things they had done. But nothing we can do, nothing we can say can properly express our gratitude to these men of the silent service. And of the men who did not come back, the men who went down with their ships, what can we say? How can we repay them? Shall we not echo their prayer? May God grant that there be no next war. But they know and we know that if there is, and whether it be fought with weapons we now know or with weapons at whose nature we can only guess, you will find submarines in the thick of the combat, fighting with skill, determination, and matchless daring, doing their utmost for all of us, for our United States of America. Thank you.